Well, we are joined by Brian Hoops, the president of Midwest Market Solutions right now. He's based out of Springfield, Missouri. And welcome to the show, Brian. Uh, good to have you on board with us here. Well, we had some overnight exports to talk about uh, that kind of got the soybean trade off to a good start. And on the soybean exports last night, we had 264,000 tons to China. It was kind of split between old crop and new crop. Uh, soybean meal to unknown destinations, 216,000 tons to unknown destinations. And while we're on the topic of exports, we have some brand new export inspection numbers that just came out. Here's a look at what we had last week, 1.09 million tons of corn. That was just down slightly from the previous week. Sorghum, 188,078 tons. That was down significantly from the week before, but sorghum tends to do that. Soybeans, 333,127 tons. That was lower than the previous week. Now, these are actual shipments that left the country. So this is kind of a tally of what uh, crossed the border heading out. Uh, wheat, 457,777 uh, tons, and that compared to 491,700 the week before. So just a little bit of backtracking on the wheat export pace, uh, uh, shipment pace, I should say. And, and it's kind of similar with the soybeans. Now, the soybean pace is uh, really kind of slowing down. A year ago, it was 537,000 tons. So with that in mind, I want to uh, talk with Brian about what's going on in the markets. Let's review our prices here, and uh, we'll go to the corn table first. We are three higher at 321 on that July contract. December's up two and three quarters on the soybean trade. Big gains in the soybeans were 12 and a quarter higher on July at 845 and a half. November up 10 and a half cents right now. In the Chicago wheat, it just cannot join the party, though. We have July down three and a half cents at 505 and a quarter. Kansas City July wheat, right now we're down a penny and a quarter. We're at 443 and a quarter. Minneapolis spring wheat trade, uh, we are now showing July three and a quarter higher at 516 and a quarter. So, Brian, early thoughts on the way things are shaking out as we start out our grain trade here on the day after that long holiday weekend. Yeah, you know, we went uh, home on Friday afternoon expecting to see some very warm temperatures through the weekend, and, and that really hasn't materialized, especially in the western Corn Belt. I drove over the weekend from our uh, Missouri office up to our Iowa office there and saw some fields in northwest uh, Missouri, southern Iowa, uh, pretty saturated with water. They hadn't gotten more rain. Water was standing between the rows, and really what, what is plaguing the market right now is the fast planning pace that we had has kind of been negated by the slow emergence. We've been under mostly cloudy conditions, wet conditions, and without a lot of heat and sunshine that the crop needs, and that's what we badly need, and, and we are rallying as a result that we don't have that right now. Now, it is in the forecast, and that's tempering our rally attempts in both the corn and the soybeans. The, the forecast keeps promising some heat and some uh, warmer temperatures and lots of sunshine, but we just don't ever seem to get that. And, and that's what's uh, keeping this market to, from really falling out of bed is a slow emergence. I think that's what the trade is going to concentrate on in the crop progress numbers that come out this afternoon. All right, Brian, we'll come back here in just a little bit, and we will take a look at our livestock trade as well. We're talking with Brian Hoops. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment. One thing is, we go back to our conversation with Brian Hoops, one thing that uh, Brian and I like to visit with is the Commitment of Traders report. Now, it came out uh, uh, last Friday after the markets closed, but we can't talk about it until today. And here's a look at what we have for positions. And uh, kind of telling, we were talking about the fact that uh, traders on the Commitment of Traders report are very short on the corn. 245,000 contracts. Uh, and then some change on the corn to the net short side. Soybeans are net long by 12,064 contracts. Chicago wheat net short 16,476. Now on the livestock side, we have the traders now net long on cattle at 13,204. That was after they bought another 1,388 contracts last week. And then the funds are net long on hogs by 9,370 contracts. They actually sold or uh, lightened up on some of those uh, long positions. They sold about 2,860 contracts last week. So that's how the, the big commodity funds are positioned right now. 
Uh, so they're long on soybeans, cattle, and hogs, short on the others. Let's uh, take a look at our current prices. We'll go to the live cattle board here and see how we're doing. We have been trading higher and <clears throat> led by the deferred contracts all day, but now everything is lifting, the entire thing. So now we even have the June at $1.05 higher at 98.75. August up a buck and a quarter, and the deferreds almost two dollars higher right now. On the feeder cattle trade, here you have the August three dollars forty-five cents higher now at one thirty-two twenty-five. Look at them go. We have everything uh, for the first four months over three dollars higher, and now the hogs are getting in on the act. June up a dollar seven at fifty-nine eighty-five. July up two twenty at fifty-eight ten. Brian, what happened? Everything's uh, kind of lifting upward on the livestock trade right now. Yeah, we're starting to hear a little bit of cash cattle trade already this week. And usually when you get to some buying interest early in the week, that's uh, friendly for the market. 115 in Nebraska, 190 being paid, uh, excuse me, 190 in Nebraska, 115 was paid in Kansas. I misspoke there. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty much steady with what we've seen over the last several weeks. But, uh, you know, it's, it's firm, and that's uh, supporting the market. Early week trade is supporting the market here. I think we're getting a little bit of a bounce after closing lower up going into the cattle on feed report and ahead of the weekend and starting to see some buying interest just redeveloping here in cattle and in hogs as both of those markets were oversold uh, by the end of the last week. Interesting action here at midday. Well, thank you, Brian, for helping us navigate the waters here. Appreciate it. Brian Hoops, president of Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri, with our look at our active trade here on a Tuesday.